I'd like to welcome us to God's presence tonight, being the third day in our spiritual week of emphasis, or week of spiritual emphasis. And I believe, as the Bible says, that on the second day shall revive us, and on the third day he shall raise us up. Today, you will rise in the name of Jesus Christ. Engaging the unlimited power of faith, part 1C. Engaging the unlimited power of faith, part 1C. People have headache and they pass. People have stomach pain and they pass. In fact, people do, some people don't fall sick and they pass. As if they die. So if somebody collapses and comes back to life, that's a testimony. Let's not take the covering of God over our lives in this church for granted as one of those things. If you lack it, we may lose our lives. Because the umbrella under which you stand determines if the rain will beat you in the time of rain or not. Everyone that is a member of this church is preserved till Jesus come in Jesus' name. No evil report shall before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Engaging the unlimited power of faith. Engage means put to work. Engage means put to work. So if you must engage, then you must be active yourself. You must be at work to see God at work. You must be at work to see God at work. You must be at work to see God at work. God is ever working. Only men are lazy, busy, giving excuses. I have tried everything. I once mentioned during our prayer in the course of the week, and I said, by the grace of God, I said, never say I've tried my best. Those who say they have tried their best, nothing next. Because after best, there's no other superlative. After next, that's end. So if you say where you are is your best, then you are a failure in life. Don't ever say, I have tried my best. Those who say, I have tried my best, they don't have a next phase. Because best is the peak of every man's ab adventure. Rather say, I'm walking towards my best. That's what the song says, my best is yet to come. Your best is yet to come. Amen. Your best is yet to come. Amen. So don't ever say, yeah, 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 I've tried my best. Then you're a failure. If your best is still 50, then you can't, you can't, you can't excel in life. If your best is that I've fasted, and what will I do again? You're a failure. Because now, if your best is still fail, if, I mean, it's still a failure, which means you have failed in life. You are not a failure in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't ever say that again. I've tried my best. It's a statement of those who will never see the next. It's a statement of those who will never see a better day. Because after it is good, better what? Ah, at least we went to grade one now. Good, better what? <laughs> okay. Thank God. Good, better, best. So which means after best, you don't have any other level to see in life. So delete it in your mind. Why do you score this? That's my best. I've done my best. I've done my best. Then you're a failure in that, in that condition. Why did you do this? I, why would I do again? That's the all I can do. Don't ever see that again. It's an error before God. It's an embargo for your destiny. Such statements are erased in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because every day, there is always a best coming. Every day, a new best. A new best. A new best. And you shall realize greater in the name of Jesus Christ. Engaging the unlimited power of faith. Now, unlimited. What is unlimited? Unlimited simply means there is no end. Unlimited power of faith, which means faith, faith can generate results unendingly. 
There is no end to what faith can do. There is no end to what faith can do. The woman I was privileged to pray for in U.S. yesterday, before I came for service now, sent me a message. He said, Pastor, thank you very much for, she's in Chicago. He said, thank you very much for allowing God to use you. That arrow they shot against me yesterday, the pain disappeared since yesterday till now. It didn't return. Since that yesterday till now. He said, thank God I'm, I'm off today. I'm at home. Thank God for allowing God to use me. He's in U.S. All the way in U.S. Unlimited. That is, there's no distance to faith. There's no limit to faith. There's no barrier to faith. One of those people that came from Junior Bible School, I don't know if she's here, he's here. He came to meet me. He said, usually, there's a spirit in me that makes me behave like a girl. He's a boy. He's a boy. He said, there's a spirit in me that makes me behave like a girl. Please pray for me. I want to be free. Small, I'm sure he can be one and twelve. I don't know if he's in church. Small boy. He came from Junior Bible School. And passion gripped me. He said, something makes me behave like a girl, even though I'm a boy. Which means there's tendency, the spirit comes to sleep with him in the night and stops like that. And by the grace of God, just in the front there, you see, anywhere power touches you, power manifests. Immediately outside there, pray for him first time, pray for him second time, pray for him third time. And he came to my office. He said, Pastor, since that time, that spirit left. He said, now I know I'm a man. That was his statement. Now I know I'm a boy. He said, the spirit is not funny. It's not something funny because it's something that somebody can carry for years and can become a barrier to your whole destiny. He said, now I know that I'm normal. Now I know I'm normal. Small boy. Faith is unlimited. If I'm to be sharing testimonies, the one that you have you seen alone today, I won't teach by privilege. Faith is unlimited. Diverse wonders of God's power. Somebody came to meet me on Monday. He said, my permit has been delayed, whatever, whatever. Send me a message today. He said, Pastor, the, my permit has been approved. Thank God for using it to, to bless me. Different testimonies. Faith is unlimited. And what is bringing this result? God, but faith in God. It's God, but faith in him. Strong or violent faith comes by hearing and hearing from God. When you hear from God, your situations will hear you. The reason why the situation is yet to hear you is because you are yet to hear from God. Now, when you hear God, you will resound God. When you hear God, you will resound God. And when your situation sounds, I mean, when your situation hears God, it bows to God. Shout hallelujah. Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 to 5. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, I, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest. Get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee. Now, God told him to take his son, the one he waited for for 25 years. To go and kill him. And God was so specific. Take this one. Take this one. Take this one. And go and kill him. Ah. But God, what's the matter? After the mockery of 25 years, I should go and kill him again? But the Bible says that, verse, verse, verse 3, And Abraham rose up early in the morning, no waste of time. And saddled his ass and two of the, his young men with him. And Isaac is and his son, and cleaved the wood upon the burnt offering, and rose up, and went to the place where God told him. Look at it, verse 4. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes, and saw the place afar off. Saw the place afar off. After three days' journey, to go and kill your own son. But because he heard from God, I keep telling people, if you don't hear from God, don't embark on any journey. No journey is too short to use your brain to navigate. No journey is too short. 
No, 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 no. It's no big deal now. It's just to go to Cape Town, just enjoy and come back. The journey may not be a successful one. Ensure about every adventure you hear from God. The Bible says, in all thy ways, in all, not some, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. And let's be very careful here, because this has to do with hearing from God. The Bible says, test all spirits. Some people speak in tongues, and they are speaking tongues of the devil. One day I was praying for somebody here. I was praying in tongues. I said, shut up! You are speaking nonsense. I am too confident that this is not Holy Ghost. I was casting out the devil in her, in, in her, and the devil in her was speaking in tongues. But I knew within me that no, this is a lie. Shut up! After all the prayers, later, later, I now pray for her specially to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And she now said, yes, indeed, the tongue she used to speak is demonic. I'm telling you, life. She confessed it that the tongue, I also knew that when I was, I'm casting out demon, demon is speaking. No, shut up! This is demonic. In the same way, many have been confused with the wrong voices. You see, God told me that, you see, I need to go to Rustenberg to go and, God told you, are you sure you are spiritual? Are you sure you are spiritual? You see, when you say God, be sure it's God indeed. Because now, God is everybody now. Everybody, God said, God said, God said, God said. You know, he, 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 nobody will say God. Where did you say it? Because you can't hold God. But now, everybody can say, God told me, God told me, God told me. But be sure it's God. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So, Abraham had God. That's why Abraham had faith. When you hear God, you automatically have faith. Because the spirit of faith enters into you through the voice of God. The voice of God is being sounded by the spirit of God. So when you hear his voice, you are initiated or induced with the spirit. So when you hear him, you don't, have you don't need to struggle to, to obey him. Because there's something that enters you when you're hearing him. It is no more you. It is now the spirit at work. John 6, 63. The, the flesh profited nothing. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So when I speak, the spirit is released. So you don't have any problem to say, I, I don't. Abraham moved. Noah moved. When they hear God. God spoke to me. He said, go to the south. When I was in the north. Go to the south. Because I had three jobs. Three open doors. Where I served, they want to keep me back. And two other jobs like that. So I was confused. When I was speech, NYC, they look for a job. Job was looking for me. I said, which one should I go? And God told me, go to south. That's how I became a pastor eventually. Go to south. Okay? When I got to south, go to Bano. He said, where should I go? He said, go to Lagos. Ah, what will I stay with? He said, stay with this person. I'm telling you, and that was how my life has been. Divine direction. When I was to marry, who is the person? He said, this is the person. If you cannot hear God, you will suffer in life. You do kalo kalo. You know kalo kalo. A day times, a day. Remi, go near. Shagun. Eleri. Bolu. Odabu. Ah, no, 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 not that one. A day times. You will not be using your life to play card. Try and error. If this lady comes, and the lady that comes is fair in complexion, not too tall, not too short, that's my wife. Now, your life will not become like Ludo. Why? Because you cannot hear from the source. It's a risk. And many are falling victim of inability to hear direct and genuine voice. I want to appeal to us. Desire a qualitative relation with God, thereby being able to hear God. My prayer is that our spiritual ears shall be open. In the name of Jesus Christ. The ever winning the ever victorious, ever triumphant, and ever conquering faith comes from hearing God. Remember Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing from God. Hearing from God. The second hearing we're made to understand is understanding. Don't just hear, but understand. Many hear, but only few understand. This morning, by the grace of God, while I was coming for our prayer, God ministered to me through me to someone, through WhatsApp, this lady was practically hopeless. And through WhatsApp message, 
I don't know who gave her my number. I said, one guy gave her my number. He said, fine. I don't need to problem. I have a problem about that. All that matters most to me is your freedom. I don't need to know you. God knows you. And I sent a message to her. She said she was this. I said, okay, but do you know what? Hopelessness is a visitor. Every unwanted situation is a visitor. But you can walk out any visitor anytime. Is your house. No visitor has any dominating power over your house. No matter who, even if he's the president. Excuse me, sir. Can you just take your leave? It's my house. Now, in the same way, every sickness and disease is a visitor. Every cancer is a visitor. Every shame is a visitor. The one you give accommodation to is the one that dominates your situation. And I said the message to her. I said the creator has a final say, not the visitor. Walk that hopelessness out. She was so excited through WhatsApp message, not phone call. And that was, she was free. Now, it takes confidence in the world to conquer the world. It takes confidence in the world to conquer the world. When you have confidence in God, you are empowered by God to dominate in your world. When you have confidence in God, you are empowered by because God's word is empowering. And when you are empowered, then you will conquer. So it's ever conquering force, ever winning force, because it is from the source of all powers. Glory to God. Acts chapter 4 verse 20. We cannot but speak the things which we have seen no heard and heard. If you have encounter with God's word, then that word will always carry you through the challenges. It will always walk through you. Saints, it's high time we understand that or we understood that devil is part of your tool for your breakthrough. Devil is part of your tool for your breakthrough. Hear this. If there was no Goliath, how would we know that David is strong? If there was no Red Sea, how are we going to know that the rest of your life can part? Because David killed Goliath, that's why we have faith that we can kill every Goliath of our lives. Every challenge that comes your way is a tool for your greater height. So when you see challenges, be excited. Because you have the answer to every challenge. And every test you pass takes you high. But you have the answer to every test because you have the omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. So there is no way the devil will hide. Omnipotent, all-powerful God. Omniscient, all-knowing God. Omnipresent, all-present God. So there's no way they can hide. Tonight, we'll receive empowerment in the name of Jesus Christ. But to hear from God, we must continue to engage the power of effectual fervent prayer. Power of effectual fervent prayer. Power of effectual Effectual means is generating effect. Fervent means with tenacity. Prayer means engaging on the altar of communication with God. I remember 2015 when I was when I was when I came here. For one week or one week plus, I organized some prayers that will pray from eight first day, first day, Monday, from eight in the morning till six p.m. <laughs> pray in tongues. No break. That's when I left the church. Some people were happy. We pray. No stop. What we did was we play music. Pray. <laughs> Some people jam out. <laughs> you pray. You pray. And it's no English. It's praying tongues. Some people will be dancing. When they are tired, they don't know what to do again. Following day, we pray from 8 to 4. 
But that week, even, even the witches in that environment, they knew that ah, somebody came there. You pray with all, and you see, it's not praying amiss because you are praying in tongues. So it's not English. Then what are you now doing? To be in the hospital for 24 hours and to be in prayers for 10 hours, choose one. To be in ICU for two hours and to be in prayers for 10 hours, choose one. ICU is 50 50. One leg in, one leg out. Between life and death. Prayers, you grow, you win, you get promoted. Effectual, not just, not just. I, it was with passion I, by the privilege of God, pray for that guy. How can this small boy be going through this challenge? What does he know? An affliction. An affliction. Passion gripped me. Hallelujah. 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 When Dr. Jeremy called, sent me a message today, I was in Juno Bible School. But I held my phone because, should in case there's any information from, because of this season that we are. And I saw the message, wow, on my phone. My wife has been rushed to the hospital. Ah, my body could not contain it. And God so good, the Juno Bible School class, they like writing. So when they were writing, I quickly went out. And with anger and passion, that no, this person is serving God day and night. This person is always in church every now and then. You can't pay him with this. That to pray in tongues and pray in tongues and pray in tongues. That's why you have the testimony to God's glory. When it is effectual, when it is fervent, it will deliver. When it is effectual, when it is fervent, it will deliver. Look, chapter 9, verse 28. And it came to pass about eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up to the mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of the countenance was all, his raiment was white and glittering. And uh, there talked to him, with him two men. But if you look at the way he prayed, he says, the fashion of countenance was altered. Don't pray and your face is still smooth. Father, thank you. Worship Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I know you're a good God. The devil will finish the person. Because that kind of prayer will not even move an ant. Not the talk of a cockroach. Because if the prayer that is not moving you, how will it move God? Any prayer that does not move you cannot move God. Father, Thank you, Jesus. You take off you. Lord, I know you're a good God, man. Father, that person will suffer. It is not a curse because it is not that kind of prayer that will chase out devil. It's not that kind of prayer that will chase out stagnation. Now, they are, they, I mean, your life is not getting better. You are saying, oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh God, he's not oh God. You pray the right prayer with understanding. It can only be effectual when it has understanding. It can only be effectual when there's a definition. Don't just pray a, pray, pray a prayer that does not have definition. Why are you praying it? What, what is the reason why God must hear? When God hears, what, who will take the glory? And when we pray, what is your intention? As a matter of fact, what is God's will concerning that case? You can't pray the will of God and yet still be struggling with prayers. The will of God will get automatic answer from heaven. This is the confidence that we have in him. That when we pray according to his will, we know he heard us. And if we pray according to his will, we have our petition being granted. Glory to God. So effective and fervent prayer requires praying the will of God. For example now, your son that is 10 years old is praying, Father, let my father give me the key to the Pajero he just bought. Will you give him? No, it's not the will of God. Effectual. Effectual means it has definition. 
It has meaning. It has premises. There are platforms available for the answer to be delivered. There are factors established by God that cannot shift his decision. My prayer is that God will engrace us to pray effective prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. James 5, 16 to 18. We don't know the story of Elias. The Bible says Elias was a, man, was a man of like passion. He prayed that there should be no rain. For us, and there was no rain. He prayed again that there should be rain. And there was rain again. So, if Elijah could do it, we can do better. What more? Engage, if you must hear from God, engage in intensive search of scriptures. Engage. When you pray well, you hear well. When you pray effectually, you hear properly. When you pray with definition, you receive divine instructions. In the same way, when you search scriptures with understanding, you are out of every stagnation. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 1. Ho, oh, everyone that tested, come ye to the waters. And he that had no what money, come ye buy. Come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine, buy milk without money and without price. So, and verse 11 now says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. But those who are thirsty are those who that will be filled. Search for the word. Saints, I'm not against pastors praying for you. I'm not against you going to prophets, but be sure you have something you can also hear from God. Be sure you're also connected. Be sure you can also search scriptures. Like I always say, our spiritual fathers, like I used to say, our spiritual fathers, no matter how passionate they are, they are still human beings, they can sleep. That's what I used to say. I used to say, and we want to see Papa, we want to see Papa, we want to see Papa. Ah, Papa too is a human being. He can sleep. Papa can rest. Papa can travel. Papa can be busy. Papa's phone can be off. But God's phone is always on. God is always at duty. Rest. Your pastor may want to rest. For example, now, I, when I went to check something in the office during service, I just saw a call. Six, 18 missed calls from one person. Just between the time I came for us to start the service and the time I quickly check, you know, information from whatever, missed miss calls. I was pushed to call the person. 18 from one person in less than like five, seven minutes. I said, this is a critical case. So I called her immediately. Apparently, she's a member from Jemistin. So You know, people come to, Jemistin, to church from here, from Jemistin, including Tembisa. So, no. He said, what happened? He said, Pastor, my breathing, my breath. Oh. And immediately, I said, thank God I went to the office. Immediately I prayed, and immediately she was restored. 18 missed calls. Ah. So what is this? But immediately we prayed, immediately God restored her. What am I saying? You must understand scriptures to have correct application. Understand scriptures to have a correct application. It is those who are thirsty that have access to the word. Those who are thirsty, when you search from scripture, then you have access to instructions. And when you have access to instructions, you have direction. In fact, when you start scriptures, you hear God. And when you hear God, automatically your situations will hear you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Second Timothy 2 15. Study to show thyself approved. A workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That is where some of us are missing it. We wrongly divide the word of truth. We use scriptures to satisfy our desires. We use scriptures to satisfy our desires. That's why when you claim you have heard from God, the Bible says out of two or three witnesses, the truth shall be established. Don't hear one scripture and say, God told me. Hear another one. Hear another one. And be sure that is it. Don't go and meet pastors that what is God saying when you are not also deaf. 
Many are, fall, are falling victim of fake prophets to this effect. Because when you go and meet some pastors, they will not want to feel like they are not pastors. Mm. You see, God is just telling me now that uh, that girl is not your wife. Mm -mm. Ah, mm -mm -mm. Kai. Ah, 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 stop, stop. It's a lie. Because if they don't do that, you won't think they are spiritual. When people come to me, what did God say? I said, mm -mm. go and pray. Fast and pray. I'm telling you, I've told many people like that. And the one I perceive, I said, well, I pass. I've never told anything. God told me this. Eh -eh. It is after that has happened, I can say it. But when I say, God said this, eh -eh. I would say, I perceive this. Pray about it. Don't, we, are, we all have equal access to God. Everybody. Don't allow some people that they, they, they carry their bag, they carry their leg, they carry them, and everything. Is, ah, he, did they carry Jesus? Don't be deceived. You have direct access to your maker. You can pray to God. You can search scriptures and he will speak to you. Glory to God. Jeremiah 29 verse 13. If you seek him with all of your heart, you will find him. If you seek him with all of your heart, you will find him. Quickly as we close, gradually. Characteristics of violent faith. Violent faith is known with supernatural boldness. Supernatural boldness. You will be supernaturally bold. You will not know where the boldness is coming from. The way you speak is so thick. The way you act is full of power. Not you want to speak that way. Something is in you pushing you to speak. Proverbs 30 verse 30. A lion which is strongest among the beasts turneth not away for any. Remember, we are the tribe of the Lion of Judah. We appear, devil should disappear. When we appear, devil should disappear. I was praying for someone some time ago in, in Nigeria, by the grace of God. And as I was praying, she, she was saying, I was speaking English. So she said, she was speaking Yoruba. She was using her mouth to harass me. She said, you are boy Yoruba. And you know, she's a big, in the realm of spirit, she's a big snake. As she was saying that, I was mad in my spirit, man. I was mad. That witch, talking to me like this, six, pa, 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 in the presence of her mother, slap her six times. She said, you're wicked, you're wicked. I said, yes, I'm wicked. Now, you can't just slap a witch like that. Not in this country, oh. don't arrest me. Not in this country, it's in Nigeria. Six times. Ah, pa, I was, something entered me. He said, you, 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 you. He was speaking Yoruba. You, you understand English. You are speaking to me, I mean, so, you understand vernacular. You are speaking to me in English. What? Talking like this. Pa, 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 pa. He said, hey, hey, you are wicked. I said, I'm slapping the witch, not you. Now, when we are carry violent faith, we misbehave to the devil. You don't even look at anybody. You misbehave to the devil. Glory to God. You react in the order of Christ. Jesus entered the temple and he saw them buying and selling. He, he beat them out. Cast them out. So don't be gentle with your situation. Otherwise, it will remain the same. React violently and say, Enough! I can't look for a job again in July. January, job. February, job. Same prayer point for seven months. When will your story change? Same point for two years. Same prayer point for three years. Be violent. Look at the testimony of Wednesday that someone sent to me. He said, Pastor, after the Wednesday service, by the teaching of faith, heart failure disappeared. She said, I couldn't breathe well. I couldn't sleep well. But after that message, I believed. And that was it. That guy that had HIV, he said, after the message that you, that you prayed for us, that um, those who have terminal ailments go and do their test, he said, at that same night, I said, no. And they told me that if I don't take medicine, I will die. He said, no. Pastor have said it, that we should do the test. And violently, Monday she went, Wonder Park Clinic, did the test, HIV negative. When you are violent, 
When you are violent, you will always silence your enemies. When you are violent, you don't consider the environment. When you are violent, you don't consider the environment. Environment is not important to a violent man. He doesn't care who is looking. He only cares about what he's doing. He doesn't care what will happen. He only cares what he wants to achieve. When you are violent, you have your testimony at hand. Glory to God. Acts 14 verse 3. The Bible says, Long time therefore abode they, speaking boldly the word, which gave testimony to the word of, uh, the, word of gra the grace, their grace, and the Bible says, granted them signs and wonders to be done by their hands. When you speak boldly, you command signs. When you speak boldly, you command signs. They brought phone to me to before service that somebody was having cancer. And with conviction, by the grace of God, I prayed for him on phone. And after I prayed, he said, I know I'm free. That was his own statement. He said, I said, rise up. He said, Pastor, thank you. Don't, I said, don't thank me. Rise up. That's my own. Rise up from where you are. Stand up from that sick bed. Rise up. And I don't know if he rose up. He said, but now I'm free. Now I'm free. Violence will always pave way for a believer. When you are violent, you will always have your way. Violent in the spirit, not just in the physical. Violent in the spirit. Don't go and fight. Say, Pastor, you be violent. I didn't say go and fight in the office. Be violent in the spirit realm. Don't enter office. Say, yes, come here. You are the one. Uh -uh, not that one. In the realm of the spirit, deal with the devil. Not and be eaten. They will take you to cell. Be violent in the spirit, not in the physical. Characteristics of violent faith. It is ever offensive. Ever offensive. Revelation 5, verse 5. The Bible says that um, land, the line of Charles, not for the line of Charles of Judah and the root of David has prevailed to open the book and lose the seven seal thereof. We know the st story of Elis, um, Elis, Elimas the sorcerer. Paul reacted and told him, Go blind now. When we are violent, we don't consider anybody. They say, Your mother is the one behind your case. Say, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. You are saying, have mercy, and yes, you are dying. They say, it's your grandmother. Have mercy. If, God forbid, if the person should die, that grandmother will be saved. And that one that die may, dies may go to hell. The grandmother may go to heaven. So, be violent to the point whereby you are offensive. They are killing you. I say, they are killing people in your family, and you know the person killing them. I say, Lord, forgive him. Forgive what? God, kill him. Okay, why did Paul say you should go blind? He was preaching, you know. Let me read it. Elima is also for so is his name by interpretation. We stood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who was who became Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eye on him and said, O oh, fool of us of mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind. He was preaching, yet he said so much you go blind. So anyone that is behind your case should become a leper overnight. So that they can see that the God you are serving is not a gentle God. When Paul was preaching, Paul was cursing. When Paul was preaching, so it is Bible. It's not my own Bible. It is our Bible. So you can react to what you don't want. Because our father say, said, what you don't want, you don't watch. What you don't confront, you cannot conquer. What you don't resist will remain. So you must rise to the assignment. Otherwise, you end up in asylum. Not permit. Asylum of life. So you must rise and say, no, enough. No, enough. This is the amount of enough. If you carry over to August again, you are to be blamed. Because this is the month of an end to every unwanted situation. This is a month of bringing an end. If people must die for you, they must die. If people must die for you to be pregnant, they must die. 
It must die for you to be married. Some people have said, over my dead body, will this girl be married? And you are saying, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, yeah. Which means you are, the, the person is not. Glory to God. Glory to God. Characteristics of um, violent faith, as we wrap up now, it carries a more than conqueror's disposition in battle. It carries a more than conqueror's disposition. That is, when you are violent, you know the end in the midst of the fight. You are conscious of the end in the midst of the fight. Knowing fully well that whatsoever is born of God overcome the world. Who is the world? The devil himself. So you know that you are born of God, then you are an overcomer indeed. Not that you overcome. Whatsoever that is born of God overcome the world. First John 5, first John 5, 4. And this is the victory that overcome the world. Even our faith in that God. So when you understand where you came from, where you were home from, you can always determine the end of every battle. Whatsoever, even your dog, whatsoever, even your business, whatsoever, your career, whatsoever, your thesis, whatsoever is born of God. Remember, whatever belongs to you belongs to God. Your business is God's business. Your family is God's family. Your career, your children, is God. your wife, your husband, your children. Whatsoever is born of God is an overcomer. So have an overcomer's mentality to dominate every situation. That's why when you are violent in the midst of the predicament, you are so conscious of a good ending. You are so conscious of the victory he has purchased. Tonight, you are returning victorious. Tonight, you are returning victorious. Genesis 49 verse 12. The Bible says uh, that his eyes shall be red with wine and white with milk. What does it mean? Talking about the line of, Ju I mean, Judah. The tribe of Judah. The tribe we belong to, we are always ready to, I mean, to fight because victory is sure. When you want to fight with victory, with victory at, in view, when you are sure of victory, fighting becomes easy. When you are sure of victory, fighting becomes easy. When you are sure of victory, fighting becomes easy. So you don't get scared that, ah, what if this boy beats me? Now, if you don't see a boy, oh, I will show you, I will show you, and you are 35 or 40. See, you, I'm sorry. You are sorry, then something is doing the person. A boy of 10 years old, he said, I'll show you. He like this, I'll show you. I'll show you. Say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Which means you have lost your human dignity. You have lost something in you. That's how the devil is doing to us. We should understand that what we carry can dominate any situation. Overcome mass mentality. Your child cannot be saying, I'll beat you, daddy. I'll beat you, daddy. Say, I'm sorry, my son. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Then you have a problem. You should understand that you know that this is imp is impossible. Can't. That is, it can it can never happen. In the same way, you can't fail in that situation. In the same way, you can't be defeated in that situation. Carry that mentality that you carry what it takes to dominate your situations. From tonight, your victory is sure.